Good morning, good evening, good day to you. I hope you're all well. Thanks for listening. Uh, today's going to be fantastic about defaded trichomes. Wow. It's going to be good. So this is a medical cannabis show. I'd like to say that I respect the law and I don't promote any unorganic growing. I like to be sustainable and work with the environment. So that's what I'm about. And wait a little bit, actually, because I found a few times people have been getting in a little bit later. So I'll wait for all the fun stuff because today it's going to be, I don't think it'll go for an hour, but um, there's some really good stuff to talk about. Some this hop latent virus, it's well, it can go undetectable like COVID, so it's sort of like a COVID thing for the plants, and it's scary. And um, it's been detected in many, many types of genetics, uh, tests are shown, so it's not very good. And how can we fix that? Oh, well, you can, right? Oh, so I'll put oh, yeah, this is what I'm going to be talking about. It's a little flyer for today. So the deflated trichomes, which is related to that the hop latent virus disease, hop latent virus, yeah, HLDV, hop latent virus disease, there it is. <laughs> and I'm going to talk about these the spider mites here and aphids, beneficials, and some go through this study. It's going to be pretty good. It's, I don't know, it was an eye opener for me. And then it made me realize, uh oh, I sure saw symptoms. So it was, um, yeah, really good learning curve, I suppose. Actually, I haven't brought up that photo. I'll have to try and find that photo. It's in my mind now. Oh, oh gosh, where is it? I should have brought it up before. Uh, it's maybe someone can ask some questions and talk in chat <laughs> to get some time. That's a shame because it's, I got a photo of it. Anyway, I'll discuss it when it comes to the point. I've wasted a little bit of time now, wait for people to get in. Let's get started. So I'll show you. Share screen. So today, going through all of these stuff. So a few positives to get up to all the mealybugs. So congratulations, Pennsylvania. So they filed for cannabis legalization they put a bill in just like in australia how they put a bill in for three states yay it's happening everywhere and i like this one because it's positive i haven't been showing any positive stuff for a bit but we need more positive find happiness in simple things <laughs> and you look at it and as an, it's just i just really like it because if you trimmed a lot you just recognize that shape and you just go wow that's an undeveloped plant because its nodes aren't yeah, anyway it's really good because it's positive. And this is some interesting news for the FDA because uh, most of my viewers are in the States. Hello to all the cool people in the States. The FDA is warning makers of edibles to change or be careful about labeling because uh, they're really cracking down on it. So this is an example of it. You can see it's pretty cool. But um, yeah, it might appeal to the younger generation, which is sort of their, it's, anyway, that's what they're talking about. Oh, and this is the, the guts of today, is the cleanliness, because cleanliness is important. And if you have everything on point and important, and sorry, and, and clean, it'll look like this. And that just looks stunning, stunning. And then, oh, where was the other one? This one, and then same thing here. Cleanliness is very important. That's a rather large trim facility. Being very, very clean, you can see the different types of procedures that they're trying to maintain. Look how they've even covered their mouth for once and their eyes, see, there's no hair showing. Really, really good job. A lot of people try and they just, there's no point in putting masks on if you don't do the proper thing. Anyway, back to it. Uh, I'll stop there and say good day. Oh, yes. That's good. A few bit of time for people to rock up. Hello there to JC Smith. How you going, mate? Nice to see you. Hey, Supreme Great. Good evening to you. Hey, it's your bro, bro, bro. How's happening? 
got some good stuff to show today. Those deflated trichomes are just a spin out. It's good if you've got your microscope. That's what one of the handy things is to look at it. You can just see for these deflated trichomes, and if you know you've got them, uh oh, you better definitely do some further investigation. And yeah, that's what I did. Further investigation and found. I'll talk about it when it gets into the section. But it's just really important stuff. It's it's rad. To, that was from uh, Dr. Zamia. He just did a study in Canada. She used to all the Canadian folk. Cool as. Supreme great g'day. Martial artist, nice to see you. Cool fella. Dave1969, welcome, buddy. One of the cool Australians, Australianos. <laughs> uh, so I'll get into the studies and stuff soon, but first I'm going to show a little bit, little bit more news and some uh, mushroom news. And then it leads into the bugs and stuff like that. So there's me there. So the FDA, so the Food and Drug Administration, they widen doors to research all the psychedelics like ketamine, LSD PT, for PTSD, and like they've just done in Australia. So it's really cool news. So it's happening. Fancy Australia, you've been one of the first, but well done, Australia. It's now legal in Australia to get, um, well, ketamine's been legal for a while in the ACT. I've had that for a while. Uh, that's in my cream because I've got, I'm disabled in my hands. So that's, I got 10%, can you believe? Anyway, um, but then and legal, LSD and psilocybin in mushrooms is legal to be prescribed in Australia now. Rad. That just goes on with a bit of a study a few days ago. That, um, that was a discussion. And here's Berkeley officially decriminalizes possession of psilocybin mushrooms and ayahuasca, the peyote mushroom component so it's pretty cool and apparently i just read down through here and it says hey look at that in particular uc berkeley alumni terence mckenna a philosopher and ethnobotanist helped elicide many of the theories so that's pretty funny <laughs> a few people get that joke um it's it says in this study in, sorry in this um article that they make a lot of the decisions for the parliament in the states. So if they've gone and decided this, that's a very positive step for parliament. So that's pretty cool. So soon look out. Because they bloom and help. Psilocybin especially. I don't know about LSD, but psilocybin definitely helps. Helps with me. Here's another cannabis thing. So it says the ASA report reveals major disparities in state cannabis testing programs. So yeah, even though they test it, they don't test it properly. So this has been a study that's done on the testing facilities and how they test it. And the report finds that there's the contaminants are often found in cannabis include mold, E. coli, salmonella, aspergillus fungi, as well as pesticides, heavy metals, residual solvents, additives, and adulterants. So it's, yeah, and also some labs they found in, I uh, can't remember which state it was in, in the States, that they were bumping up the numbers because it's all about numbers, as you know. So, um, yeah, it was good. This is a really good report done. Scroll down a bit for you just in case you want to read it later on because I'm not going to read it all. There you go. So that's good. Finally, knuckling down on things to bring out the medicinal properties, not just the, um, the cannabis properties, the cannabinoid and it's about where you get because you don't get terpene, many terpene flavonoid properties if you get the bad stuff because it's not grown properly. What's this to say? Health Canada to begin testing of illegal and legal cannabis now. Yeah. So they want to gather some information uh, like that study that was done in the Sydney University last year where they were asking for people to send in their uh, legally grown in the ACT cannabis for them to start doing programs and tests to see what comes out of it. And this is another thing that they've started, so that's cool. In Canada, good on your Canadian, bringing out the medicinal properties. That's about it, eh? Now it's up to crown gall disease. So that means we're getting into the, I'll say, see if there's any questions. Let's just see. Uh, hey, Matthew Flick, how you going, mate? 
nice to see you. Uh, if you've got any questions, just put the question mark at the end, um, and hopefully I'll see that because the question mark highlights stuff. Ned Kelly, nice to see you, mate. Very good. People, right back to it. Um, so I'll sh start sharing all of the, let's see where I'm up to with all the slides. Oh, yeah, the cleanliness, mealy bags, getting into that, and that studies later on in the jobs, the entrepreneurships in cannabis. I've got a few good ones this week. So for the bike riders, woohoo, bike riders. Cheers to all you cool bike riders out there. <laughs> um, all right, I'll just start from here and continue on. I like that. Yeah, anyway, I'm going to get to that one right now, actually, because it's really cool. What's this? Come on, I'll give you a little bit in chat. What's this? What pest is it? Or fungi? What is it? I'll give you a little bit of a time because I really spun out. I thought, I looked at this, thought, wow, what's that new so-and-so disease or something? Or what's growing there? And um, it just really took me away when I found out what it actually is. So what do you think it is? I'll give you another 60 seconds. It'd be funny. It's going to be funny to read. I'll try and bring up on my tablet. Uh and I can read out, hopefully, if there's anybody commenting. Just because it's it's amazing to see, well, not to see, but what is it? Look at it. You can see all those hyphy-looking long things there. Hmm. All right. I'll tell you. I don't know. Just having a bit of a, not a bit of a game here, just because this spun me out. So I was just going to see if it spun news out to just seeing whatever anybody says. Someone's asked, says Ned Kelly. Oh, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Jesus, I didn't think of that. Okay. All right. It is a, it's an, a human eye. It's a human blooming eye. And I thought, what? And then I went, oh, okay, it is too. You can see the little convex, convex thing or thing that around it and you just can't see the colored bit. I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. So, yeah. Back to it. I love this. That's the future, the, the solid future. It's not about growing trees. It's about numbers and pumping them out, I think, with this vertical space. Because if you do the yield ratio, it's um, that's a lot better. Play some maths out. Anyway. Mealy bugs. This is, if you see a long looking scale, like because scale's the round thing on cannabis stems, and you see it moving, you think, oh, what's this moving scale thing? It's a mealy bug, and they're pretty much white. So when they break down, they have this white matter and stuff too. So, yes. Uh, how do you remove them? You want some Bavaria bassiana, is a entomopathogenic fungi. That gets in it and it creates white muscular disease so it'll hard it'd be hard to see if it affected this one because when you infect other uh, insects with that um buveria bassiana you can see it looks like this that's actually a really good representation if it's got buveria bassiana infection but mealy bugs just naturally look like that yeah oh yeah spider mite infestation so this is like Jono had a few weeks ago on his when he was consulting he saw this and he said what can you do well this stage there's only one thing you can do is a vacuum and i've done it probably not at this stage because see how it's really red at the top which means they've really get, let this go for too long um after i've done it when the whole thing's been a, a web though and it just goes suck and it sucks oh hang on that's that should be a bud there oh geez and it just sucks the butt up and goes in the shop back for a while or for two seconds and then you pull pull the stem back out and it doesn't it get rid of the bug and a lot of the mites so that's one combating way to because at this stage it's that's way past infestation that's a extreme infestation and this is the hop latent virus disease so if you see your plant looking like that i know it was easy for me to um, identify it because I had um, I got fungal resistant genetics so I don't see any botrytis or powdery mildew anymore uh, so when I saw this I just went whoa uh, I looked a bit further 
and found investigated to hop latent virus disease. It's horrible because it can run, um, it's latent. That's why it's named that way, meaning it can be like COVID, how it doesn't show its head. You can have long COVID and not show symptoms. It just waits and um, it hurts your THC numbers. It hurts um, your terpene profile a lot. A, on, I'll go through the study. Uh, Dr. Zamir did it. Uh, I thought this is all right. This is this is that really if you're growing outdoors, but it does affect cannabis and it's army worms. This is their growth stages as it goes through their six growth stages and gets bigger. You can see that's two mil. This is five mil, the scale down the bottom. But yeah, neem's good for this. Spur, Spodo Terra. Oh, I can't remember. All right, let's see what it says. Was it Spodo Terra Fuga Perda? Spodo, S P O D O P T E R A is the genus, and that species is F R U G I P E. RDA, okay, very good. Back to it, next one. Is that all I think? Yes, what do you do if you've got aphids? These things kill aphids, ladybugs, ladybugs. So this must have had a lot of aphids on it and the ladybugs have just gotten and taken care of it all and that's and you can't really see any aphids around there now. I did that with spider mite one time too, put it outside and let Mother Nature put it under a tree that was had a lot of um, a lot of insects and things, and within two or three days it was gone. So it was good instead of spraying. Well, don't like spraying's bad. There's actually a thing. Where is it? I'm gonna show it right now. I'm spraying, so I get to it later. This side, I'll show it later too. Pesticides, they're so bad because they take out all of our active life that we are trying to build up. Farmer wants us to use it, or Men at Bay, they want us to use it because then we've got to buy all other products to try and fix all the product stuff we've, we've damaged. So you can see as the education improves over the years, these are the, um, the amounts of usage that's been used. So it's, um, it's gone down substantially. So soon it'll be eliminated and then um, Big Farmer will be really upset. Why aren't they buying it anymore? We've got to create something. Anyway, back to where I was at. This one, these are some garden beneficials, inside and outside too. So lace wings, they do so many, so many things, lace wings. They're, um, they're really, that and Montgeranesis will take care of virtually everything if you've got any problems. So if you're coming into spring or into a time that's going to be very buggy, uh, you want to think about getting beneficials and just throw them in. Because for the sake of one or $200 before you, get the bugs, get the problems, it's already eliminated. And once you have bug or mites or fungus problems, bacteria problems, you realize that um, they're so hard to get rid of and it's just the 200 bucks at the start would have easily been worth its money for the sake of doing it. Yeah. So um, I'm not gonna run through all of the things that these have benefits to do, but um, they all have their own beneficials. The lacewing, ladybug, soldier beetle, the smooth snail hunter, the common wasp, parasitic wasp, ones that make um, those wood nests, those little larvae, those paper, uh, 14 spotted ladybird, as well as the two spotted ladybird, the snail hunter, the black snail beetle, devil's coach horse, and the cream spot ladybird, grassland beetle, carrier beetle. Looks like a dung beetle, that one, doesn't it? Um, so if you see them really grab them, there's evidence too that suggests that these four species of bacteria act together as a biostimulant for cannabis. And that's the Pseudomonas petita, which actually I've used petita before to eliminate, uh, is it Pythium, Fusarium? One of those ones, it's really good in acting on that Umycetes pathogens. So the four that they reckon work really well together are the common gnosis genus, Citrobacter, Enterobacter, and Pseudomonas. I'm not going to say their species names because you can watch this if you want because I'll probably mispronounce them. Pseudomonas petita 
helps cannabis plants by secreting antibiotics that fight pathogens, acting as natural biocontrollers for crop protection. Pseudomonas is a gram negative, oh, okay, aerobic bacteria, okay, about 180 species, divided into 13 groups. Certain groups are identified by their production of pyridophine, a fluorescent pigment picked up under your fluorescent microscopes. Uh, the trichogramma. Trichogramma is an insect that's very beneficial that kills its entomopathogenic wasp. It really works really well. Um, so this is just its life cycle here. So when it's laid, it goes through its pupa, it exits, and it's an adult. <laughs> uh, main target, the false cattling moth. Okay. So that's what trichogramma loves. It also helps a lot of other things too. It's very beneficial. Hey, small buds, I'll just get back in here and say good day before we keep continuing. Small, small tubes. Not small buds, sorry. Sorry, mate. Small tubes. Here you go, mate. Nice to see you. He's always dabbing on there, loving his dabs. Let's be buds. Here you go, mate. Nice to see you. Let's be buds. Let's be buds. Hey. Everyone on this stream is buds and friends, I can tell you. That's right, it's just nice. So I don't promote or talk about drama. It's all about plant science, microbes, and soil science. <laughs> now where I was up to, I haven't done crown call disease yet. Been, been a long time. Yes, it has been small tubes. I've had a session with you in a few years, I reckon, mate. Um, <clears throat> So while I'm on to the different bacterias, let's go on to a, another type of bacteria that is one of cannabis's only, there's very few bacteria diseases that cannabis has. This is one of them. It's crown gall disease. It's by Agrobacterium tumefeces. That's what's caused by its, let's identify it. <clears throat> this is another study looked on by Zuma. Zemia, let's call him that. Um, so let's identify and gall disease. What does it look like? Well, it's got these outward growths that you see on other trees that they're very big, uh, big knot looking things, and that's the crown gall disease. And to other, I'll tell you the conclusion now, it doesn't do much out from this study, which is very happy for cannabis. It was an old way where they used to transfer. Uh, Plasma, T plasmids and different genes of interest. You could put it into here and it was an easy way to get it into the plant. It's a nitrogen fixing, no, it's not, sorry. That's rhizobium. <laughs> Crown gall. Yeah, so that's different ways it'll work and show itself on the plant. Um, bacteria infection. The symptoms. Well, I'm going to scale down because this read is all right. I'll go slow just in case you want to stop it later on. Here's some, when they induced it into the roots, you can see it just starting to grow and show its head just above the soil, soil line. So it's not really talked about much. And maybe because it needed a PCR to prove that. Yes, I need a PCR. Hello to Lars Larson. It is PCR. Um, the conclusion, that's what the PCR looks like. You make your primers and it comes up a little thing to be active and all these ones were active. Um, I'll get down to the conclusion. Diagnosis, acknowledgement, so that means it's concluded. The results of this study demonstrate the occurrence of agrobacterium tumor feces in cannabis production facilities, causing crown gall disease and its development on the crown and the stem tissue but with no apparent visible symptoms such as reduced growth or vigor of the affected plant. So that's really positive news. So if you do see it, you don't really have to um, call for backup. So that's pretty cool. So there's crown call disease on cannabis. Next one, what's that? Unlocking agricultural potential on satellite, oh, that's for testing later on. So I'll get back to where I was at. Uh, testing, 
Oh, yeah, all right. We're up to testing, so it's these videos. So look at this. This is a cool way now. Show. Why is there a message held for review? Small tubes is all right. Show. I'm asking it to show. I can't see it. Uncle Nibs, that's all right. Anyway, chat's weird, isn't it? Um, this is a... This is the future. So this is with um, developing with pests and diseases and that sort of thing. You can use your drone to go and pick up. Actually, hang on. Is my screen like that again? You don't want to see me. There. So now when I share my, share my screen, it'll be full. Sweet. Sweet. All right, I'll start again. So this is the, the drone activity inside of a grow house and how it just buzzes around and it does its own thing. So it has its own docking station and it's run through computer programs. So when it picks up stuff, it can send out alerts. It's just fascinating. It's the future. There we go. It just lovely docks itself. That's so cool. Eh? And then once it goes above the field, this is what happens when it goes. This is another video. So when it flies above, this is what it's seeing. So it's got its program over here. And if you were to look on a monitor, you'd be looking at, well, this. <laughs> and this is like a normal NDVI, normal growth differential index, where it just shows different patterns in different things and it can pick up. So see down here, they've put on a program, which is the harvest is it ready. So it must be a visual thing when it's ready. So maybe you want, want all, the, um, all the chlorophyll pigments to be leaving it. For instance, and it's going through its cycle, so it's um that might be the way the programs. I don't know. I'm not very good with programming, <laughs> but this is it as it's flying over the crop. You can see up the top here. This is what it looks looks like on the computer. So for it to read itself, so this is what we see. But this is what it sees, and you can see it's all different things that it's picking up on all the different spaces for it, and it's reading. Yeah. I just reckon it's rad. That's so cool. Uh, into this study now, is it? Oh, no. Oh, that's how to get rid of... Oh, yeah, this is a short study. Read this first before the rad one. This is um, different crop. You've got conservation tillage and you've got no-till. Conservation tillage is when you disturb the ground for between 1% and 10%. And no-till is when you don't disturb it, when you just move the soil apart and plant then so it's not disturbed. And this is a study done for the umycetes, so for all of the pythium and the fusarium uh, type of problems that we get in cannabis. What's the other one, the fourth, third one? Mycerium, fusarium, pythium, ra. It's not coming to me. Well, the umycetes, that's the way they're under that, that family. So this shows the different testings that they've done and upon rotations okay so this isn't really much but this next one is a good impact and shows you so after a few years they've done this three-year study and they've found that the pythium this was tested just on pythium so if you do conservation tillage which everyone assumes even me thinks that's good well look it goes up after a few years every year it goes up the amount up again but if you do no-till look at that it virtually stays the same so that's the impacts low in other words and on different on an overall species no tools goes down so the overall impact is really fascinating if you've got um, too much moisture in your substrates outdoors you should go the no-till method if you have problems with those uh, pathogens I loved it. Love that study. That's today. All right, let's talk about these deflated trichomes. What are deflated trichomes? Well, the reduced photosynthetic products, the sucrose, is available for the trichome development, and potentially other genes are affected, causing trichomes to be undeveloped and stunted. So, why are they affected? It's because they've got some sort of problem, and the problem might here might be the hot latent virus disease 
and that causes it to underdevelop. And developing, it has lowered cannabinoids. Therefore, having a lower percentage outcome, as we'll see, it's sad. So this is so major, and it can be latent, meaning the plants can grow fine. You can get a fine yield, but it's, and yeah, I'll get to it. So if you were to zoom in, this is what you'd see. Normally, you'd see on the left here with all the nice stalk capitate trichomes. Over on the right here, you see a lot of sessile trichomes and a lot of disfigured, the stalk and capitate is very not elongated like it should be. Actually, this is even a poor photo over here. They should all be nice and stiff, like just, I'm sure you've seen them before. These are crooked and shaken. Look, they've got unis. There's not even ones with them. Um, so that's a bad, ex it's a similar example, but this is just, anyway, hope I've gotten to it. So yeah, that's the outcome. On the left, it is nice bulbous round sessile ones. And on the right here, these sessile deflated. It's a good electron scanning microscope of them. And this is some tests on the flower outcomes to test the THC content. So there were three, uh, four cultivars, Blue Dream, Mac one 54 and powdered donuts were all tested and they are all found to have a lower THC content. And MAC1, uh, it marginally went down. That might be because of its triploid, because of its extra set of chromosomes. It might have had a bit of an immunity to it, but it still did go down though. So it's sad. The hot latent virus disease is commonly found in dry flower samples in what they tested above 40 percent of all of the flower tested samples that they did that's that's so many so that means that there's a chance that you might have it latent in your genetics or if you get seeds from people that don't test their genetics or um, are problematic you might have um, mixed this into your gene pool uh, so here's some experiments done. So they're seeing how potent this viroid is. So they've mixed a positive female with a negative male and seen what the, the offsprings. And then they've gone and mixed a negative female with a positive male and seen what the offspring was. And at both times, they found that the viroid, the viroid particle or the virus is present on the seed coat and inside the seed. So it's very, very, even just from handling it, it's got this white looking stuff. I'm gonna have to look for that photo. It looks like um, powdery mildew, like white stuff, but it's not powdery mildew, it's this secretion. Uh, you need ends, anyway, what's this? The infected female plants give a higher seed transmission rate compared to infected female plants, infected male plants, or the pollen that was used. So, but it still is an infection rate. So it's still about 40% of the male pollen that can carry it as well. So there is considerable variability in the level of seed transmission depending on the infection level in the mother plants. So even if the, it might be low, but still it's an infection and it's still going to be latent, but it's still going to be just laying there dormant. And it's, to me, that's really, really scary because I'm a breeder and I really, I don't want any of this, even if it's 0.1%, I don't want it transmitted or, or be crossing it so what happens if it develops or it builds a resistance and gets 20 percent 30 percent in later cultivars and all your work for the last few years have been spoiled so this is a scary thing for me is hop latent virus present in young seedlings divide from infected mother plants so they did a test similar again where they found it to be true the infection rate was at about 43 44 percent and it varies from mother to mother because it depends on how strong the mother has it at the start, but they found it to be in the range of 23 to 53%. So some management options. What can you do if you get this? Besides yeah, panicking. Um, you start with the tissue culture plants. So you contact me and um, we fix it, do a merry stem culture. So if you haven't got a merry stem um, cells cultured, there's a pretty hard, high chance that you're going to transmit it because you're going to get all other plant tissues going to have developed vascular tissue, meaning that the virus has gotten into those cells. 
so was it tested several times while in tissue culture? This is what you've got to do. So your tissue culture, a Mary stem, get the cell out of the middle of the quiescent center, and that won't have had time to grow the vascular bundle. So you can get um, cells that are clean of the virus with the same genetic code. And you multiply that and test them. So that's what this is just going on about. Just test it again, then test it, and then test it again, grow them out, test it, and then look for the false negatives. Heat therapy does not work. Cold therapy is unproven to work as yet. There is no concrete answers yet on using tissue culture for hot latent virus disease. But if you, well, the Mary stem in the quiescent center, if you, there's no, well, I haven't done that test, so that's just what's been said. So there you go. So if you were going to do a tissue culture, that's not, the Mary stem is like right in the center there. You have to get it under a microscope and pull it out. Actually, should I? No, we're not doing tissue culture. It's, yeah, because I've done plant development biology and it goes heavily into plant developments and it shows which cells, like pericycle cells, are just these ones here that create the leaves and the quiescent centers right in the middle. So you want to use the right cells to make sure it's clean. That's how you clean other viruses out of other genetics. So here's, you can see where they've just done a nodal stem, just where they've cut it. And this one's where they're trying to do a Mary stem. It's say a very bad example because it's not, it's got a lot of other tissue around the Mary stem. They could have at least trimmed it around like this. So this is what it looks like if it's infected. So if you've got a plant that's grown out and you see it, you think, wow, look at all this botrytis that I've got growing on it. It's not botrytis. It could be hot latent virus. So that's how I picked it up because I'm using the um, fungal resistant genetics. So I don't really get these symptoms anymore. So I saw it on a leaf. I'm going to show it to you, actually. I'll show it to you after this. There, it looks like that. Only a small smidgen. But it does say positive plants are more susceptible to powdery mildew. So, but I did extensive suppose I've only proved it once. Well, that's just what I'm, I'm not going to, yeah, that's what I found. <laughs> and you should see, the, I'll show you the leaf. It's very small. That's it. All right, I'm going to have a quick squeeze for the lip, for that. I'll put this up. I'm going to have a quick squeeze to see if I can find that leaf. It might be under ploidy, I think. So I'm doing quite a few ploidy experiments. Uh, I'm just gonna have a bit of a look through the ploidy ones. Can't really show you because there's a cool, some ploidy stuff that hasn't been done. I don't really wanna share it yet. Still doing experiment phases. No, it's not under ploidy. Um, I know where it might be. I know where it is. I found it. I found it. Stop looking, everyone. I found it. Yep, it's under this section. Yep. Now I need to find which photo it had. Okay. Cool. I'm in the right. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not. I should show you these photos. And anyway, there's some bad infections. Um, it was under removal, endophyte removal. I'm pretty sure. So that was under plant science. Uh, I want to show you because it was something that I learned just recently. Endophyte removal. Is that under microbes? Ah, oh, it's down here. That's right. I wrote on the leaves. I've even labelled it. Cool. So I'm in the right section now. Just got to get the one you want. 
stem cankers. What's the removal? No. Sorry, I'm trying to still look. Bear with me. Oh, it's in this section. I've just got a lot of stuff here. So I know people are going, what the hell is going on? Sorry about that. I'm trying to look for a snippet of a pic where you can see identifying the virus on the leaf and it's not powdery mildew. It's not for me. Oh, that's a real shame because I really learned a lot from that. I just like to pass it on. I'm not going to keep going because I can't find it. It's just going to probably click all. All right. That's a shame. I tried. Back to it. I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Well, that's really nice to hear, mate. I hope you help. Howdy. Hope you're doing well too, my friend. Talking on some homegrown. Yes, well done. It's legal in the States, so why shouldn't you? <laughs> uh, all right, back to it. I just talked about the hot latent virus. Now I'm going to get into the... While we're here, let's talk about... Actually, I'll take that one down. Unlocking agricultural potential, the impacts of satellite data from modern farming. So that was just talking about before on how the drones are really helping. And then they're going to go up and hire again, and they're going to use satellites. Well, they already are. The NVDI index comes from this normal vegetation differential index. So it's how they can tell with differential scrub over the years. Um, so this is another way that they're going to be using cropping in the future. So they might be opening up to obtaining data analysis from satellites, drones, and sensors. It's the future of agriculture. They just got to so for you. This is um, more so folk for the jobs. So a few entrepreneurships in cannabis. Um, if you're very clever with your um, drone or programming, you start writing some programs like this. So when things fly over, they were going to see what's going on underneath it. So you can just do it from a. Um, I'm not going to suggest different ways how to do it. I'll just scroll down through here. Well, alternatives, earth observation versus drones. Yeah, see, looking at that, it's just green. But under the drone, it can tell you what's going on. Why is it dark green? Why is it light green? So after you find out those reasons, then you can investigate and alter the program and you know what the outcomes are going to be. There's a, like, there's a Munsell's soil chart. It's called Munsell. Munsell's, yes. And that's um, using the difference photographs, morphogenic expressions. So you can see that morphogenic the photo visual expressions, so you can uh, just see what the results are just from looking at color. Now, I think that'll lead into the jobs. No, that's not the one. All right, we're gonna get back to it. Um, that's today's show, where I was up to today's show, the 30th. Now I can present again. I was trying to look for that visual of the, and it took away my, where I was up to, sorry. Now I'm back to it. This, because we've done, yes, long-term tillage, up to the, done that disease, and it's the jobs possibly, oh yeah. And first it can be, thank you. So thank you for the $5 that supports underneath. That's what the subscription does. I appreciate those folks that have done that. It helps a lot. Uh, $80 gets you my private, there's about a dozen private lectures that I haven't released. I've got thousands of private lectures related to cannabis under my lectures for free for use. $150 gets you a 20-minute call and a novelty gift like something that I've made. Uh, $300 gets you a weekly call and that's related more so for companies who want some help getting started or for medical patients and want my educated opinion. 
So the can of jobs, entrepreneurships in cannabis. How can you make money with cannabis legally? Well, this is our future. And it's, it's visual as well. I just really liked it. I thought, wow, how cool is that? It's just, um, yeah, so this is those artistic people. This is kind of art as well. Just doing some art. So if you're really handy with that, you might be able to do something and sell it somewhere or advertise for people. This is um, a lot of things aren't really tested. So you can make up your own. Don't quote me on this, but you can put out things to help people by simply doing them like they've done here. And if you look at the ingredients, so they've got a substantial amount of THC, CBD and CBN, plus this terpene, which they put chamomile, which is helps with sleep. So it's, um, it's nothing stopping anybody else doing that as well. I just thought that's really, they'd sell less for top dollar, just because they've got a few drops of the CBD and THC in it, which as you know, drops cost very little. So that plus that is very little to produce, but yet they add a few zeros to sell it. Uh, this is good. So for the places that are legal now, you can advertise if you want to do it and um, do short stay hemp house accommodation. So you can provide some sort of Bob Marley lounge, I presume. <laughs> this is a house that's built out of hemp creek. So that's probably what they go on. But um, that's just another way, if it's legal in your area, to make money off this, this plant that helps us all so much. That's why I use it here. This is another way for cycling. So put out some cycle tours. So it's legal. Like in the ACT, just start some cycle tours. You know, natural products. Here's another cycling thing, medical cannabis bike tour. How cool is that? So get fit in both ways, in the brain and in the body. <laughs> oh, that's it. That's it for today. That's it. Has anybody got any questions? I really like the uh, deflated trichomes. I've never really um, heard much about that. So that was pretty, pretty good. That helped me a lot. 47 minutes, it says it's been going. Well, if there's not much... I can try and look. No, I'm not going to try and look for that thing. It's not really going to mean much now. If you guys and girls got anything to suggest now, uh, please suggest or ask questions. Um, my studies, I go back to my uni studies soon at the end of this month. So it won't probably be as interesting then. I'll just be more so talking about my courses because I'll be full time doing uni and. I'm doing a few microbiology courses this time. Actually, yeah, I'll read them out. Cell culture technologies, irrigation and drainage, farm machinery. Yeah, I don't know if I'll do that one. That was just one because I like farming. We'll learn more about it. Uh, biodiversity protection for breeders and farmers' rights. So that's a cool one. So I'm only doing that one just to find out what the farm um, the rights are of breeders so it's a three-month course i'm going to sit through just to find out what us breeders are our rights for because you know we can patent cultivars that's possible i've looked into that oh another course is microbial physiology and metabolism and there was there's another micro course i just saw the other day where i'd like to pick that's cool oh there's a question what's the best way you found to prevent Deer, if possible yes it is a from oh the big manufacturer there um deer fence mate you got to put up that that's the only way that i've found because they love it <laughs> that it's flexible and it's pretty cheap so you have to buy some stakes you know the long metal stakes or just get some wood or around trees i've done it in tra around trees in the past too and you have to put a full barrier around it and then you put a little latch onto it so you can get into it when it needs servicing and then latch it back up and it has to be eight foot tall because deer jump over six foot tall fences 
so it's yeah that's about the only way I've, I've found that mate what's this one to say they always prefer it uh, I appreciate it man yes they love it for some reason and yeah so that's that's a good way good luck good luck well next week I'll he says uh, I'll probably use logs to be honest I can't like okay well if you yeah if you've got logs you can make up it's got to be eight foot tall like really truly eight foot tall it can't be six foot because they get over that if they smell stuff inside they'll be really really just they'll try and get into it like as if that like a bear gets into a house for food they try and get into it like that so they really try hard and if you've got a big buck with his big um antenna his big antlers they might take take it down so if you're using wood mate really make sure it's done pretty well somehow you're welcome i like to help especially use folks in the states it's right at the end of season too for years so you'll you want to protect it now that's for sure looking at harvesting soon it's, it's um anyway so next week i was going to combine i've been i get together the lives and i here yeah, i'll show you i prepare stuff over so once i see an interesting article i'll just put it in my live section and then i'll keep it there and then i'll um see where it can be used like all this stuff down here all of these slides are for just things to be used in the future so i've got to allocate them to their weeks which have meaning for them like see all the, the pasts that i've done up here all these specials that i've done on tissue culture and nanotechnology and agriculture smart fertilizers microbes all different things so i'll wait for those titles to come up then i'll put them in there so it can make for an interesting show and next week well for the next three months i'm going to be studying so um i'm going to combine i think these two weeks here so there was a study done on the joint size or on what size of your cannabis should you use if you combust or vaporize it so it was should i use it one millimeter three millimeters and five millimeters was the study and it was cool to see the different outcomes so i'll go through that and i'll combine it with this plants emit sounds under stresses under stress so they emit ultra high frequencies that they emit under when they're stressed out in different ways um i put that out in weed nerds for people to test that too if anybody can help me do a, a experiment on that because that would, that's that's so rad if we can you know turn all the fans and everything off if you're an indoor um, grower where it's legal to grow you'd um, turn all the fans off and everything do a quick sound check test bang see where your plants are at and then turn everything back on again and it just gives you an instant update like bricks used to do to get, tell you your sugar content in your in your leaves uh, this could do a overall health check for your plants so it's really um it's important study that needs to be investigated so much more. And Kenner Health, well, that'll always be ongoing. There's so much Kenner Health stuff. So I'll, I'll combine those two weeks and see what else I can throw into it. And that'll make for um, interesting talk, I think. Stop sharing. Righto. So what's... By the way, I've also tried electroculture. I've noticed a huge difference. Oh, really? Have you? Someone asked a few weeks ago about literary culture, and I looked into that, and um, it does look interesting. I'd like to hear your elaboration to see how it um, it's works, because that's new technology. That's interesting. Good on you, mate. I love your experimentation. Yes, even um, martial arts just finds it interesting. So, yeah, please, mate, tune back in and, and let us know your, um, your results. If you can put together a... A bit of a few photos and if you've got like a, a control on the left and electroculture on the right um with the same cultivar you know same mother plants um clone for instance i'd really be interested to, to hear that, how that goes and if you put together that i'd get you up on the show and we can discuss it because that's um that's cool technology mate he goes on to say yeah the ones i used is on doubles its size copper is the best to use found art oh, okay wicked where can i send the pics well if you can put together on your computer save some up um weed nerds 
if anybody wants to join Weed Nerds, I run a, a very slow forum on, on Zoom. It's where we show things like this. So if anyone wants to be involved in that, uh, email me at weednerds at protonmail.com and tell me why you should be involved in it. And then we can have a video chat and then um, yeah, see if it works out. And that's an example where it could be sent, mate. But you can probably just send them there or put, put together a collage of them, save a few and get a file of it. And then we can discuss it in a few weeks' time. What do you reckon? Because I'm sure everybody, including myself, would like to hear about that, mate. It's if you experiment and others experiment, all these experiments add up and they can all sway us different ways and just to try different things with our genetics to see what works for us in our environments. Good work. Oh, cool. He says, got it. Got it. I got it, friend. Okay. Thanks there, friend. Sweet. So that'll be something to look forward to. Well, that's cool. I've got nothing else to really talk about. Next week, going through those things that I showed, uh, look out for your deflated trichomes. <laughs> Actually, that'd be a good one to do. Microscopy in cannabis. Yes. Yes, I remember. That's the, uh, So I was referring to, you did send me some videos on it which I remembered. That's why I looked on about it. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Lene. Yes, weed nerds. That's where it is at, martial artist. Actually, you're not in there, I don't think. You're welcome too, mate. I know you. Uh, just for our experiments and stuff, and it's on th through Zoom, so if you've got Zoom, it's handy. If you haven't, it's a massive file. But I don't do IG or Facebook or anything else like that. So... um. I just don't like all of the, the spam, so to speak, you know, all the junk that you get. It's, yeah, it's hard for me. My hand disability is weeding out all that rot. But, but yeah, electroculture is cool. There's um, vibration culture, another one I've heard of. There's a few different rad techniques that they've got where we to investigate. Good stuff. Right, thanks, everybody. I don't have anything else to say. Thank you see, again for everybody in chat rocking up. I appreciate that. Without chat, it wouldn't really be a show because I don't like talking to myself. And I hope uh, today helped a lot. And see you all next week. I'll be here next week again. So I'll see you next week. Happy breeding, happy growing, and good health to you all. Goodbye.